Our scripture today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 to 30. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Thank you, Sandy, for reading the scripture for us today. And now I just ask, will you all join me in prayer? God, for those of us who have heard your scripture over and over, make us new today. For those of us who have worked through the scripture and, and toiled with the scripture, those of us who have felt difficulties with the scripture, bring your spirit today, God, that that you might bless us, not just with understanding, but with an ability to love the way you love. For all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So when you hear the scripture, do you feel like you have a good prescription for being invited to enter into the joy of God's eternal embrace? Or have you always had trouble with this particular scripture like I have? This is a God of grace and compassion and just action. This God revealed in Jesus Christ shows me a God who teaches us how to love. But as for the worthless slave, it says to throw him in the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Does that sound like compassion? I found a scholar named Dr. Derek Weber. He's a director of preaching ministries. He's actually from the British Methodist Church, and he got his degrees at the University of Edinburgh. He's taught preaching in seminaries for years, but this particular scripture bothers him maybe as much as it does me. And so as the Holy Spirit is teaching the church, I ask that you be open-minded about what he might be thinking this time. And challenge, can you challenge what we've always thought about the scripture with what the scripture might actually mean? Now his take on the scripture starts to talk about the talents. Um, a talent is a huge sum of money. And it's almost hard to describe the huge sum of money in terms of bills because everybody is different on the way they live. But what if it were in years of income? A talent was approximately 15 years of wages for a typical laborer. And these three slaves 
were given different amounts. One was given 15 years of wages, one was given 30 years of wages, and the next one was given 75 years of wages. And the master gave no instructions, said they didn't sign any papers, there was, there was nothing going on there, it was just, see ya, and off he went. No, there was no idea how much time was gonna be spent before the master ever came back. So I want you to think about who Jesus is describing here. Because this particular scripture is right between two other fantastic pieces of scripture. One we read last week, and it was about the, the ten maidens, and it started out, the kingdom of heaven is like. And then the next one is about the actual Jesus coming back in glory. Um, and, and that's where it, how it starts. But this one says... It was as if man. Could it be different? Could it be one of those sandwiches where you put the, the really good vision and the really good vision in between some terrible fault? Because that's what Dr. Weber thinks. In fact, if we consider what does this look like? What does this master sound like? We don't usually think it sounds like God at all. Couldn't it sound like maybe Tony Soprano or some other gangster? This is something that's really strange where you just give a total large amount of money and you just let it sit there and you walk away with expectations that are uncommunicated. Tony would do that. He would have a huge sum of money that he got in some illegal manner and, and he would have captains. And when a captain was a good earner, he would just welcome them and say, enter into the joy. It was the joy of the boss. It was the joy of the Soprano family. But, but he was just thrilled that, that his slave was a good earner. And then for, for bad earners, well, it was the mob. And, and there was going to be some weeping and gnashing of teeth and maybe a bullet to the head. That sounds a lot more like this scripture than what I imagine when I talk about Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ was the revelation of God that teaches us about just action, about compassionate action, about seeing the people who are on the fringes, who have the least, and, and actually going to them and, and bringing them signs of hope and healing. And, and Jesus does this consistently for years. And that's what he's all about. In fact, he has to explain himself to the Pharisees saying, this is why I would heal on a Sabbath day. This is why I would feed the hungry on a Sabbath day because compassion matters more than anything. So do you hear compassion in this story of the talents? Or do you hear the ways of the world? You see, the ways of the world is, it was as if man, the ways of the world are the ones that expect production no matter what, and you're good with production and bad without production. The ways of the world are what Jesus was trying to help us break away from. And so think about who Jesus was, how Jesus didn't get the typical job, how Jesus didn't multiply um, the resources that he was given by God. He actually sacrificed he even gave away the life he had. He wouldn't play the game. And, and I wonder if Jesus relates more to the worthless slave in this story than he does to the master. Because the worthless slave is willing to, to bury the intentions of the world and live life. Is willing to take whatever wrath the master has, maybe because he knows there's something bigger. The worthless slave doesn't sacrifice the benefits of other people in the world for his own good, and instead holds on to it. He ends up taking the, the beating that would cause gnashing of teeth and weeping. Jesus himself died on a cross, not to have the final word be death, but to have the final word be life. A life restored and a life resurrected, a life that 
evil cannot put out. So, could the scripture be telling us that the way of the world might be the way of achievement at any cost? The way of the world might be the way of benefit my pocket instead of yours at the cost of yours, but the way of God is different. The kingdom of God is a place of grace and a place of compassion. The kingdom of God was given to us while we were still sinners and was given to us as a, as a way to help us understand that God's love overcomes everything, even our own faults. This is an expression of passionate love that's made through sacrifice. That's who Jesus is. And that is not necessarily the master in the scripture we read today. Can you think of all the ways that you are called to love like Jesus loved? Think of times when being productive isn't as good as sitting next to a person that's going through grief. Think of the times when giving up what you have actually changed the life of somebody else. Think of the times when you would just give anything to stop the suffering of a family member that you loved. This is how Jesus loved us. And Jesus is quite a contrast to the master of the talents. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for the outpouring of compassion that comes to us through the life and, and the scriptures of Jesus Christ, your son. I thank you for the uprising of, of spiritual strength that comes into each person in this, this church as they realize that they are empowered to love this way, that they are empowered to bring hope this way. God, help us. Help us when we struggle with scripture to see you, and most importantly, to see your love and your grace. For all this we pray in the name and in the way of Jesus. Amen.